Have you ever wondered how to get a different background? Something like this, or like this, or like this. Here's a video that's going to show you how to do that with no jargon, easy to do. If I can do it, you can do it. Get out of my way. You're always so angry. Caledonia, get back here. I'm actually out here live in the field, just on the other side of a week in a valley where I live. And I'm going to be using the scene behind me as my backdrop. So I'm giving, I'm doing this as a wee example of what it looks like actually out live in the field. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to step away from the camera and record maybe about 10, 15 minutes of just the scenery behind me. And I'm going to use that as a backdrop. I'm going to make sure that I'm standing so that I'm an arm, exactly an arm's length from the pocket two and that the lens of the pocket two is level with here and i'm doing that so that i can exactly replicate that when i'm back in the studio so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to pack everything down back in the car and drive round the round the road home and then get to work on the green screen final cut pro part of this video so you'll see what it looks like from me being out in the field to... And here we are in the studio with the background that I recorded, the 20 minutes worth of background that I recorded where I was actually on location just a couple of seconds ago. So how have I got this set up? Well, it, all it is is it's just a, a green bit of cloth and it's a half an arm's length behind me. If I do that, I can actually touch it there. And I'm standing positioned to the camera exactly as I was outside, one arm's length away, and the the, the, the pocket two lens is at the same height that it was when I was out in the field, so that I can I can replicate exactly what I did out in the field. The only difference, or not the only difference, but the main difference is the audio. The audio is not going to be the same in the studio as it is out in the field. Now you can probably get some kind of application that would allow you to simulate the outside while you're inside the studio and I will look into that because I think that may be quite interesting too. I haven't done any research on it and I know you can fiddle about with the audio features in Final Cut Pro and make some adjustments but I haven't really looked into simulating a, an outdoor sound while you're in the studio. I'm sure it can be done. So my setup in, in, in here is just the back screen, the, 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 the green screen behind me and I also have the lighting. You're maybe wondering how have I lit this? Well, here's how I've lit it. All I have is a soft box just behind the camera, slightly higher than the camera lens by a few inches. And I have my curtains closed. There's a little bit of daylight coming in, but, but, but not very much. I also have an overlight here, an overhead light here, just the, the normal light in the in the studio, this is my spare bedroom, and it, but it's turned off at the moment. I'll turn it on and show you what it looks like with that on. So that's it with the overhead light on now and the softbox. And I should really change that that uh, lampshade because it creates a wee bit of a pattern which may may be picked up in the, the green screen and may be difficult to, to get rid of. I will be changing that. But I think it looks fine with, with just the softbox anyway. So that's the setup that I use. It's very, very simple. I've, I have this this green screen just placed. I, I get, it's actually against the wall, and it seems to work fine. I could uh, adjust where I stand. Uh, I could stand a bit further away from it. Some people say that you create shadows if you stand too close. I find that this this half arm length there uh, it suits me just fine. But the most important thing I think, if you're going to simulate being outside or simulate a recording you did earlier is make sure that the camera is at the same length and the same height so that the the, the, the transition from one to the other uh, is quite easy. Now you can use an image, just a photograph at, for your background. You can download it from Pixels or Pixabay or anywhere from online that allows you to use a copyright free image or you can take your own pictures and you can use that as your background or you can use video one that you've taken yourself or video that you've downloaded from a, a site just make sure it's copyright free if you want to upload it and monetize whatever you're you're you're, you're making
Here's a few examples of different backgrounds that I've downloaded from places like Pixels and Pixabay that are, are free to use. How about this one? <laughs> Quite like this. This is a good one. I like these blue kind of, uh, what are these, acoustic, acoustic sucker uppers. <laughs> <laughs> they they deaden the deaden the sound. I might have to get a few of them in this week's studio to stop the weekend at echo. Okay, so you can use any, any photo you want, any photo you take yourself, or video. Here's an example of a few different types of video you can use. Here's one that I filmed when I was out with Caledonia uh, what, a couple of weeks back. You, if you've seen the full video, you'll recognise some of this footage. So the, the erosion light's quite good there. You can use any type of footage that you've taken at all yourself or any of your friends have taken or someone you know and has given you permission to use it. But there's more to a green screen than just putting a background there. It can also let you use special effects like this. If you don't have a big bit of green cloth, you can also use green paint on the wall like that. That's just some green paint that I've brushed onto the wall and here's what it can do. Handy. One thing that you do have to be careful with when you're using a green screen is the clothing that you're wearing. For example, this Christmas jacket here has got some green in it, which is the same colour as, as, as the green screen behind me. Now, when I apply the keyer and put on the background, here's what happens. So be careful that you're not using any green in the clothing you're wearing. You could possibly do some magic trick type things with a green screen like this. <laughs> or even things like this. <laughs> Let's see how that looks with a background on. Or even things like this. So I'm going to move on now to the final cut part of this tutorial and show you how I get that landscape that I recorded earlier up behind me there to make it look as if I'm outdoors. So to create a green screen background in Final Cut Pro is really quite simple. Let's assume that you already have filmed your narration or whatever it is that you're filming with your green screen behind you. And let's also assume that you have the background that you want to use and you've imported all of these into Final Cut Pro. So all you have to do is find your green screen part that you want to put the background onto. So let's just drag this little bit here, put it into your timeline. And I'm going to mute this so there's no extraneous sound coming in. Then you would find your the background that you want to use. And I'm going to use this bit of background here. And you drag it and drop it underneath, directly underneath the part that you want to green screen out. And then what you have to do is highlight the part that you want to put the green screen effect onto. And in Final Cut Pro, you're looking for an effect called Keyer. And it's in the Effects section, in Video, and if you scroll down to Keying, you'll find two effects, Keyer and Luma Keyer. And it's the Keyer effect you want. So if you drag that over and drop it on top of your main part, boom, just like that, you have the background that you want. And if you want to change that background, it's quite simple. Just find a different background that you want to use. If you have one already installed, and here's one here. And all you have to do then is drag that on top of the background that you had before. Let go and hit replace. And the background has changed. And this is the same procedure whether you're using video or whether you're using a still picture. And it's as simple as that. So that's how you do the green screen effect in Final Cut Pro. And I hope that was jargon free and easy to follow. I like to make things as simple as I can. There may be another way of doing it in Final Cut Pro, but that method works for me. And if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs>